Now, everybody, we're getting ready for our flight across the Atlantic Ocean on this beautiful 777. And while we put a lot of trust in these airplanes when we fly across water for so long, why? Because can you imagine being here above the middle of the Atlantic and your engines fail? No problem, especially nowadays with very safe and modern engines, no trouble at all. But there is one thing that can be a big problem. Can you see what is going on right here on the left engine? Yes. Is that fuel leaking out of the left engine system? Yes, everybody. Air Transat Flight 236, I say. The plane that on a flight from Toronto to Lisbon ran out of fuel in the middle of the ocean and had to land in the Azores and magically did it on no power the Azores glider. Fuel leak that was a problem on Singapore Airlines flight where the fuel that was leaking ignited and caused a fire on the wing and lots of other cases. Yes, fuel leaking out is a bit of a problem indeed and today we're going to experiment around with it. As you can see, this 777 is leaking fuel in the left engine. Let's see how far we can get here from La Gloria's airport. So let's go ahead and turn on this airplane now and start onto our doomed flight. So turn on the battery right here, turn on everything here. No, looking good. Turn on the APU. We've got everything beautifully loaded up. We've loaded in 112,000 pounds of fuel and we're already losing some. As you can see, maybe it's due to the fuel leaking. Okay, plane is turning on. Let's close the door on this plane. Let's arm it right here. Yeah, beautiful. That's armed. Yes, we can close the doors manually. This is, after all, the most realistic out on airplane for any flight simulator ever. The Flight Factor 777 for $104. As you can see, this door's still open. No trouble. We can just quickly close it right now. And like in real life, we have to, boom, put that and arm it. Yes. Okay, as you can see, these screens are slowly turning on as they do in real life. Just a, like that is something that other add-ons just do not have. But well, let's go ahead and pretend this flight is going off normally. Yes. So enter everything in we got from our flight plan here. Let me tell you, we're not going to actually be able to reach our destination airport in Germany and Frankfurt. No way. <laughs> we're going to probably like crash into the ocean. Let's see about that. Okay, we're going to take out from LaGuardia, as I previously mentioned. Looking good. Using runway one, three. Very nice. Okay, let's go ahead and tell... Oh, he's, he's, in, he's taking a shower. Look, let's go and tell the ground crew now quickly to I'm remove here. the stairs. To remove the chocks, to remove the GPUs. Got it. Yes, Listen. sir. Come, sure stop taking a shower. He genuinely is doing that. Um, great. Okay, good. The stairs are yes, disconnected. Looking good. Okay, looking good. Our, our plane is aligned. APUs are running. Wonderful. So let's go ahead and grab our pushback tug right now, which I have to do here uh, using using this thing. Uh, pretty, yeah, this is good. Yeah, look at that pushback tug. We're steering it now. Genuinely. No kidding. Oh, oh. Whoa, whoa, I've just nearly crashed. Okay, let's change the direction now of the pushback tug. Yes, as you can see, and we're gonna now move toward our airplane here. And we can even still see the fuel leaking. Okay, get this dot into the green. Wonderful, and we're ready. Yeah, wonderful, looking good. Let's go and release the parking brake now. And let's go ahead and turn on the engine. So that, ignition switch start. That should work. Yes, it does. Put in some fuel in there. And let's move the aircraft now. Come on. Yes. We can see the engine running. We can see the other engine having a bit of a piss. Okay, looking good. Meanwhile, we can start setting up the other engine too, maybe. Let's do that quickly. Looking good. Meanwhile, we're pushing ourselves back. This is, the, I'm doing like the job of a hundred people here, even pushing back our aircraft. Let's go and do a very bad pushback here. All right. Why the hell's the, oh, there's a door. Oh, the door's still, oh, forgot about that. that okay, let's now? go ahead and unlatch the plane now. We can definitely hear our airplane coming to life. Oh no, that's not, oh my God, we nearly crashed. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, look at that. We're removing the pushback tug. Now as we speak, our engines are turning on. Now as we speak, we nearly crashed our, oh, I crashed, oh. Oh, all right. Um, finally, let's get the doors closed, by the way. All right, looking good. All cabin doors closed now as we speak. Close it now. Yeah, looking good. And now we can finally start taxing. If we waited any longer, we'd be out of fuel by the end of the runway. Good. Yeah, you're done. That is the pin indeed. 
Good luck, sir, is a great word. Let's go ahead and finally start flying. So we're quickly just going to do a little taxiation here. Now, the interesting thing is now that we have a fuel leak, definitely is the way for pilots to find out about it because there is not really a sensor that sees a fuel leak. Not really, obviously, how? Like if there's just a random pipe destroyed. But while the 777 would be able to kind of have an inkling of something going wrong here, you can see fuel flow on the left engine is quite high considering the low state of them. See, a fuel leak is interesting because it's mostly not really noticed. There's no loud alarms connected to it. There's no engine failure, fire thing, anything. But here, there is the fuel flow engine left alert. And that would be definitely a red flag that you'd have to check for because you don't want to end up like this A330 that ran out of fuel. But we're going to do that. That is definitely how we're going to end up. So everybody, runway one, three, identify. Let's go, um full power. Oh, we haven't set up the flaps. This is the worst flight I've ever done. Come on, uh, flaps 15. We've got no V-speed spe set up. We've got a door alert. No, the doors are all closed, aren't they? Okay, 80 knot. We've got a lot of noises in here. Looking good. All right. And take off. Let's do it. We're on our way now to Frankfurt in Germany. Beautiful takeoff on the 777, positive rate, and we can still see the chemtrail stepping, which is informed of fuel, by the way. Fuel chemtrail. Okay, speed checked, and the flaps go up. As you can see, we are, uh, yeah, we're poisoning the entire neighborhood here near LaGuardia, which is a lot of fun. And well, the thing is, we're gonna actually make it even worse because the absolutist realism of this airplane right here lets us simulate fuel leak from each and every pipeline. The right engine, of course, as well, but the four forward pipeline, the aft pipeline, the aft pipeline here. This is probably also for stuff like the APU that's being fed. So we have like fuel leakage everywhere around the airplane. You can see a lot of it is leaking out. We could even do like leak in the hydraulics, of course, or leak in the oil. That would be interesting. And this is a really big problem. We're burning fuel like crazy right now. You can see it going down like just insaneness. And so this will be very interesting. How long will we last with a fully leaking aeroplane? Hopefully we're not going to be over the ocean by then. That would be very bad news for us. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and just quickly set up the flight plan to the end. I haven't really done this properly. I just want to see what happens when this plane runs out of fuel. All right, looking good so far. But one thing is talking about noticing the immense failure we've got going on. We don't really notice it at all right now because we're flying, because the engines are running at relatively high power. The plane doesn't notice that the fuel usage is extremely high. And so we as pilots, if we weren't looking at it, which I mean, you don't really always assume that there is a fuel leak. This thing could go without being noticed. I mean, as I'm telling you right now, we're going to run out of fuel within an hour. Now, for example, the Air Transat flight, which was crazy because it fully ran out of fuel, obviously had fuel leaking in only one engine. You know, the odds that both engines are leaking fuel is pretty crazy. The plane only leaked 13 tons of fuel per hour. And let me tell you, this is a lot more. At our current rate of flying, we're using 76 tons per hour because we're leaking out of every hole we can have. This thing is just a flying gas dispenser at this point. Check out the amount of gas we're leaking. And we can just only see that by looking at the fuel flow itself, seeing that it's absolutely off, especially looking at our fuel data. I mean, we're about to reach the waypoint of Greki in a few minutes. And at Greki, we're supposed to have 106,000 pounds on board, whereas we only are now, even though we haven't reached the waypoint yet, 87,000 pounds. We are performing so much much worse. Let's go ahead and put on a little bit of a time lapse right here. This is real time simulation. Just put a bit forward. Let me go ahead and increase our speed a little bit. Now, in real life, I'm pretty sure pilots would have been able to see stuff, even though we have no warnings. But just the fact that our fuel calculations are so low that at Frankfurt, we're going to be at zero, 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 makes a pilot think, okay, we're going to run out of fuel pretty soon. Let's go ahead and stop that from happening and land as quickly as possible before we turn into a glider. But honestly, let's not be thoughtful pilots at all. Let's ignore the fact that the fuel calculations are just so weirdly off. The plane's just running out of fuel as we speak and see what happens. Will the plane warn us at some point. Let's take a look. All right. Meanwhile, time lapse goes on. Uh, 47,000 pounds on board. Well, we're at 39,000 feet. For some reason, we're extremely slow, by the way. <laughs> and we're still in America land, although we've used more than half of our fuel already. Well, we've kind of lost it. We haven't really used it. Most of it is now on U.S. soil. 
Great. <laughs> okay. So far, uh, so good. We're still flying, uh, as it seems. Well, the thing is, I'm not running this in real time, by the way. Not speeding up anything. We've got 6,000 pounds of fuel left. We've got a fuel usage, though, of a lot. <laughs> We're using, like, 2.7 thousand pounds per minute which means we have like one and a half minute of flying left genuinely and the problem is the fuel low warning as it's coming on right now fuel quantity low is coming in way too late now we would for the first time have an error mid-flight whereas an extreme fuel loss which is unrealistic because it would never happen means that it's already too late even if we started descending now we would lose the engines by the time we reach somehow below 5,000 feet. This is not good at all. All right, so Winzip, shut up. Let's see what's going to happen now. I mean, we could already try descending, but the problem is I want to use as much altitude as possible to glide down. It's actually unwise to descend. And left engine is going to be lost in a second. Okay, not looking good. And zero in the left tank. Okay, fuel pump L left is failing. We've got no more fuel and we've lost the left engine. Engine failure, as it says here, not good. And any relight doesn't work at all. This thing is not able to start up. And we are about to lose the left engine too. And oh, we've lost the right engine. And that immediately means our cabin altitude is going up. We have got now not only the problem of a dual engine failure, but also that our pressurization is broken. Obviously, the engines have to feed air in order to keep the pressurization up. So the cabin altitude is rising rapidly. Boom, we've lost both engines, and that means we've got a full electric power loss as well for a second. Cabin altitude is going up, which is why I'm quickly grabbing, there we go, our oxygen mask right now. Okay, oxygen mask is grabbed. That's very important. And our plane is now starting to descend. We have lost both engines right now. Our altitude is rising. We've got a rapid depressurization. And in fact, we're in so much trouble now. We've lost, oh my God, I've lost control of the airplane. Uh-oh. Okay, quickly turn on the passenger oxygen right here so the pa passengers don't lose consciousness. We need to quickly put out the Ramar turbine right now in order for us to regain a bit of electricity. Okay, I've got flight control back. We can hear the Ramar turbine being active. We are now effectively a glider. Now, we're quite lucky we have a Ramar turbine at all. For example, the 737 doesn't have it. Instead, you start up the APU. But guess what? The APU needs fuel too. So if we're in a 737, we'd be absolutely cooked. Talking about being kind of cooked, the problem here is that we're kind of in a low airport area. It's hard to kind of find a suitable airport to do an emergency landing at. We will probably use this airport right here, uh, Alburn Lewiston Muni, because all the other airports around here have runways that are way too short. Even this airport only has 5,000 feet of runway. Okay, come on. We need to hand fly the airplane now, obviously. We're keeping a good glide speed. We are losing altitude gradually. Okay, autopilot is Think we've got a cabin altitude warning. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. We've got 0, 0.0 fuel left. More warnings, more warnings. Hydraulic pressure issues. We'll definitely struggle with the landing gear coming down, but at least the fuel leaking has stopped. Mainly because there's no more fuel to leak. Now, if we take a close look to the left of us, there is our emergency landing airfield. Not the longest runway, but that's kind of all we have for now. We can only glide for a set distance. All is looking good, though. As you can see, the oxygen masks are out, so people can still breathe. That is great. But the disappointing news is that the in-flight entertainment screens don't work, as you can see. IFE doesn't work okay i'm kind of planning our arrival into our emergency landing airport the runway is right there so we will you know try to orbit around a little bit lose a little bit of speed and altitude so that we can land and we're gonna cook the brakes because we're gonna need a lot of brake you know what let's be brave and actually put out the speed brakes to be able to descend quicker okay speed brakes are extended but only slightly though we have very limited control of our airplane now that is for sure okay what's the issue what's the issue now we've got another issue over speed warning. Okay. Okay, looking good. Runway is over there. We're at yeah, 12,000 feet. We're extremely fast. We're gonna do another orbit right here just to a 360. That makes us lose altitude. Okay, let's put the speed bra brakes back. Let's maybe do calm down, drink a little coffee. Good. All right, I think we should be set up. I think we should be ready to go. We're 10 miles out of the airport right there. Here is Clue. And I can see the runway in front of us. We should be able to make it. Uh, let's go ahead and do something. Put the landing gear out already. I think that's good. Let's do it. 
Okay, alternate gear extension is working. The only way we can get the landing gear down, as you can see, that has come out in a jiff due to gravity extraction. But the landing gear door, of course, will stay down. All right, we need to break a little bit, so let's go ahead and do that. This runway isn't very long at all, and so we don't want to fly in with a lot of speed, do we? All right, shut up now. I wish we could shut off the warning. Okay, we're now falling down like a rock on this airplane, and it's kind of scary, really. Oh, my God. Uh-oh. We're losing a lot of altitude here. This plane doesn't cli or glide at all well. Oh, no. Oh, please don't say we're not going to make it. Uh, okay. 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 Runway's right there. We've got everything set up. Let's maybe, uh... Okay, let's set up the flaps. Let's bring them out all the way. I know that's gonna give us some drag, but we're just okay. Okay, it's gonna be the hardest landing in the universe. We're losing speed here insanely quickly. Oh, I'm pulling up all the way. I'm pulling up all the way. This thing is just dying. This thing is just dying. I'm pulling up all the way. I'm pulling... Oh my god! Boom! We've... We didn't make it. We didn't make it. We did not make it. We weren't able to make it. We've cracked. That is really bad. Okay. I'm sorry. I expected this to work a little bit better. That was uh, that was a very short... No, nope, that wasn't good. The problem was I put the flaps that down, but obviously the flaps wouldn't come down because the loss of hydraulic. Yeah, everyone's dead now. So everybody, yes, of course. This was an extremely, well, unrealistic situation. Obviously, first of all, a plane wouldn't leak so much fuel that quickly. And also, pilots would notice a lot quicker. And we would have actually managed to do a descent much earlier and maybe even have engines running by the time we land. But still, this is something that can happen on airplanes and will happen in the future and happens quite a lot. Fuel leaking out of the airplane. Like, for example, here. Even though that's just a very tiny amount. Everybody, thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I'll see you guys tomorrow as always. Good night. And a special thanks goes out to my members, my supporters. <laughs> Guns Killer, R27, James Duram, That Dude, Anime Gods of Gaming, Derek, Insider Plane, Nishijitsu Finer, Professional Jamal, Ryland Williams, and New The York. You've got beautiful names.